Uh, my name is Kay Adam White. As I said earlier, I'm the component maintainer for the REST API, but for the purposes of this session, I am a senior engineer at HumanMade. And my name is Libby Barker, and I am a senior project manager at HumanMade. Over the past year um, at HumanMade, we have been very intentional about taking a Gutenberg-first approach to all of our work. So whether we're beginning a new engagement or we're considering how to bring value to an existing engagement, um, our goal is really to think about how we're going to best position our clients um, to uh, incorporate upcoming change. In the context of Gutenberg, um, that's not just you know, uh, bracing our clients for uh, changes to the software, but it's really working with them collaboratively to lay a foundation for their product that will allow them to embrace and leverage those changes to best suit their editorial teams and the long-term goals of the product roadmap. With that in mind, um, with the imminent release of 5.0, we wanted to uh, take an opportunity to look at how we've done that with one of our clients, Artifact Group. Um, Artifact Group are a design agency and an innovation consultancy based in Seattle, and their mission is to change the world through design. So with that in mind, they decided that it was time for them to embrace uh, some design changes of their own. They've been using WordPress for several years, but they wanted a fresh start, both from a design perspective and from an editorial perspective. The watchword for the new version of their site that they hoped to launch was that they wanted it to be bold. A consistent and visually engaging redesign across their entire website. And they wanted to do it in a couple weeks. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, the goal was to take a visually striking home page and use that to draw people into much more in-depth explorations of individual projects that they have taken on for their clients. And when we took on this project, we had an initial conversation with them about the way that they were thinking about their content. And we were pleased to hear them use words like modules and like uh, component library. They were already thinking with a block mentality. They were already finding ways from their design perspective, and this should be familiar to any designers in the room, to take the content on their site and think about how it looks from a high level and break it apart into repeatable elements that they can use across the website. From a technical standpoint then, this seemed like a pretty good match for Gutenberg. We were starting the project at a point where it was becoming more stable. They were a little trepidatious about taking on an in-development technology, but once we showed them how we were using Gutenberg on humanmade.com and some other projects that we've worked on, they were very excited about the possibilities that this new version of WordPress seemed to match the mental model that they had for their content. And from a development standpoint, it helped us answer questions about where we start. As I mentioned, they wanted to launch this project very quickly and they wanted to iterate. They wanted to get something up and then they wanted to continue to expand it, which we're continuing to do now, uh, today. So we started with two questions. We asked them which components on their site, which blocks were the highest priority. And we looked at the content on their site and we said, well, which pieces of this are actually already satisfied by WordPress? Because if you're familiar with the Gutenberg project, the goal from the beginning has been to give site authors the ability with WordPress itself to visualize a site in their heads and achieve that site design in reality. They wanted to be able to provide robust tools right within WordPress for us to build the sites that we want to see on the web. And this means that a lot of the individual components that Artifact has on their website are actually already met by what Gutenberg gives them out of the box. Things like full width images, image alignment control, paragraphs, columns. These are things that we can launch with either minimal change or basically just a few lines of CSS. Conversely, there's more complex pieces of data that have different pieces of content in a specific relationship that do require a little bit of custom development. And this lets us parallelize two strains of work. We can look at focusing our development time per sprint on building that high value content, that impactful, big, visually striking design language they wanted to deploy across the site. But every sprint, we can also fit in a couple smaller changes to the styles of what's provided by Gutenberg and say, oh, by the way, now headlines all take the fonts that you want and they all work at the sizes that you want, so you can now use those throughout the site. 
For each one of those big ticket items, we can break it down into its individual elements and say, all right, maybe it's not conceptually that complex, but how do we take this piece of interrelated content and provide an editing experience that is robust and that lets this block suit all the different purposes to which it might be put? The way that Artifact envisions their site, it includes art direction, the ability to take different images and apply them at different screen sizes. And it involves a number of different themes and color options. All of these things are something that we're able to build into the editorial experience of the Gutenberg block that represents this component on their site. And that component can then be rolled out across a variety of different page templates to, su to suit I'm sorry, a variety of different purposes. As we released blocks like this, Artifact's editorial team was actually able to find ways to use them in places they hadn't anticipated. For example, if they had built a block for the homepage, like this lens module I've been showing, which is designed to engage someone and bring them into one of their case study pages, they found that it actually could also be put at the bottom of a case study page to lead someone onto the next page in their site and recirculate. Their site doesn't have advertising, but those sorts of blocks can also be reused in a variety of different contexts. A lot of the work that we've done with customization on News UK and other projects can be rethought of in terms of blocks and can be thought of in a way where we can give editorial control exactly where we need to without sacrificing the ability to maintain a strict design. Artifact, being a design agency, did have a lot of parameters around what they wanted to be able to support on the site. And they had very, very specific guidelines about what combinations of font sizes and weight and alignment were permitted. For every place that Gutenberg gave us the ability to give them something out of the box, we could also use the filters that are available to actually hook in and make it so that, for example, they could not apply a font that was not supposed to be applied to a large heading, that you just couldn't use that font. If you clicked on the font, you still got a, a sorry, if you clicked on the heading, you would see a font control, but the blacklisted font would not appear. Similarly, if you were looking to be able to use a particular column layout, they only want certain types of content to appear in different types of columns. So we can hide or adapt or filter the native Gutenberg controls to control what can be put into it in a way where their authors are empowered to create stunning pages, but they are not given the ability to deviate from the design. It's the best of both worlds. The focus of our development was on the front end, but I think the thing that really sold the team on the possibilities of Gutenberg was the way that the designs of their front end could be reflected within the editor experience. And something interesting that we found here was that we actually got to a point of sufficiency very quickly. If there was a alignment issue on the front end, that was something their design team was adamant should be fixed before launch, and of course we would work with them to get there. But within the editor, there's more room for error. Since it's only an internal team that's going to be consuming it, it's more important for the blocks to play nicely together and to provide a flexible editing experience than it is for them to necessarily match pixel for pixel what you see on the front end. So from a relationship perspective, as Kadom noted, um, Artifact was initially hesitant to uh, take the leap with Gutenberg. Um, to embrace something that was still in progress. Um, but that hesitation really vanished kind of as soon as we demoed for them how Gutenberg was being implemented on our own site, humanmade.com. Um, and over the following weeks, as we began experimenting with this and bringing features back to them um, over the course of a sprint to test and review, um, it was great to see them really embrace it and to actually see as they became more familiar with the features and the product, and the user experience, how that shaped their uh, large idea of how the roadmap would play out and how they could really use this technology to their advantage, um, not only for end users, but for streamlining and increasing efficiency in their own workflows. Um, so as a project manager, that's one of the most you know, satisfying things you can hear on a call. This is great. This is exactly what we wanted. Um, so it, that's been a tremendous reward for us. It really has married the ability to innovate and provide a great partnership with Artifact. It's so satisfying to hear th from a developer perspective as well. <laughs> as we mentioned at the beginning, for a year now at Human Made, we've been using what we call a Gutenberg first approach. But as I said earlier, the Gutenberg team would say that Gutenberg itself is about achieving vision and giving the people who use WordPress the ability to achieve their vision for their pages and their sites. 
This isn't about fitting a client's needs to the technology. It's about finding how the technology can be used to achieve the client's vision. And their business objectives then govern everything that comes after that. We've really enjoyed the opportunity to be involved in building things with Gutenberg in this formative stage, in part because it's been able to influence what we feel should be, we should be doing to contribute back to the project. And the things that we run into on a project like this or one of our larger client projects, they inform what issues we can open and how we can allocate our time to make sure that we can work with the Gutenberg team to get the issues fixed that really do impact the most people around the, around the web and around the WordPress community. Gutenberg, therefore, is more about being client first. I'm really excited to see WordPress itself moving in this direction. I think that what you can do out of the box with Gutenberg is fantastic. I'm a technology guy. There's a lot of interesting technology problems we can solve at this. If you're interested in talking about hot code swapping or the server-side rendering stuff that we've been experimenting with on Fox Sports, that's Asia. Um, that's something that I could talk about for weeks. But Gutenberg is more about client vision. It's about understanding the business need and making that a reality. It's about finding out how you can think about the content that we have on our site in a modular way and giving editors and authors the tools to author that content as quickly and seamlessly as possible. Thank you.